from Germany on Spunky. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm Martin. Mm -hmm. And um, since 10 years, I'm working at Genot Labs uh, in Dresden, in Germany. So um, what I was mainly involved there uh, in the Genot framework, I don't know. Uh, do anyone know about the Genot framework here? <laughs> yeah, someone? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's like an operating, uh, framework, operating system framework uh, to create operating systems. And yeah, I was involved there in creating the first in-house kernel uh, for Gnode and then in, the, in drivers and hardware support, especially for ARM. And after that, I switched a little bit to uh, testing infrastructure and built an automated tester. And uh, then, yeah, I finally ended up uh, uh, with Ada and Spark last year. And, uh, and to be honest, I'm a total new newbie to this. Uh, I uh, visited the Ada dev room last year the first time and yeah. I was very, very excited about uh, experimenting with it. And then I, yeah, I thought about uh, how can I, how can I uh, leverage from this? How can I uh, do some adder in my own system, in my working system uh, in, in Gnode? And I thought, why not uh, write a kernel for it? Because it's the most fundamental task. I want to uh, trust it the most. And yeah, so uh, first a little bit about Gnode in general, because not everyone knows about it. Uh, I said that Gnode is an operating system framework. It's not actually a, an, an operating system. Uh, and this framework consists of three parts. Uh, first, you see here at the bottom of the picture that uh, Gnode runs on several kernels, mostly uh, microkernels. Uh, um, there are a lot of uh, third-party kernels like Nova, SAL4, Fiasco C, or Linux. Uh, and there's also this in-house kernel I mentioned uh, that has the beautiful name BaseHW. And on top of that, we have the first component of Gnode. Uh, it's the core. And what core does, uh, it actually translates from all these different uh, kernel interfaces to the generic Gnode API abstraction. So uh, that every component then runs on top of it, uh, generally is kernel agnostic. You don't have to recompile it normally to, uh, to use it on a different kernel. Uh, wants to decide to uh, switch. And then on top of it, you have a vast collection of uh, uh, components that you can put together like Lego bricks uh, to create your own individual system. And this individual system can uh, scale from embedded systems up to like desktop systems. Uh, we actually, in, in our office, we use all uh, uh, our own desktop system built on, uh, on Gnode. Uh, for working. And yeah, you can see there are a lot of drivers for the most common uh, uh, hardware uh, on x86 and on ARM. And then you have these uh, native uh, resource multiplexers like a router for networking, an audio mixer, and so on. Uh, then there are system services. Uh, like, um, for instance, the, uh, the, the init. This is a very special one because it's, uh, it's used very broadly in Gnode uh, because it can dynamically load subsystems. So you can start other applications with it and, and control them, manage them. And also the services between them and, and the resources. Um, then on top of that, you have applications several. These, these green bricks here are native applications uh, um, that, that run natively on Gnode. Uh, for instance, you have there these depot query and depot deploy. These are tools for the package management, uh, which brings Gnode. Uh, or for instance, the Sculpt Manager is like a, a, a managing component for a desktop system. Um, yeah. And then there are a lot of uh, ported programs or also because uh, um, Gnode provides also a libc abstraction and POSIX uh, for porting components. And you can see, okay, we have uh, GDB, VirtualBox, GCC, and all the stuff you need normally to work uh, independently. 
from other systems. So, uh, and then a lot of libraries I have uh, colored in. I have put them with uh, different bricks because, uh, yeah, what I wanted to show with these bricks is all the components are very well separated from each other. So what core uh, or what the, the system does is it applies a very strict organizational structure. So the complexity of the whole system can be managed. Uh, so normally uh, all these components don't know for, from each other. They only see services and uh, they know how to use them, but they don't know from where they come. So normally you have only client-server uh, relations between them and parent-child uh, relations, but the components themselves don't know about from where it comes. And yeah, so I wanted to start here with the base HW kernel because uh, it's an in-house kernel. I uh, know a lot about it, about its internals, and it's uh, very easy to, uh, to modify because uh, the base HW kernel is not really an, uh, a self-standing kernel. It's a library that is linked against, uh, against the core of Gnode. And uh, it's uh, less than 10,000 lines of code, a lot less if you uh, specialize on one architecture. And uh, the, these, uh, these modules that uh, the base HW kernel is made of are also very well, uh, pretty well separated from each other. Uh, so you can uh, pick them out and translate them, for, for instance, uh, or, or modify them without uh, having to change all the interfaces. Um, okay, and uh, one uh, special thing about the base HW kernel is, as I said, it's linked against core, so it runs in the same address space, but it's separated from the core functionality through a syscall interface. The syscall interface is very small, because uh, we wanted to keep things very minimalistic in the base HW kernel. It has uh, like uh, 25 public syscalls to uh, user components and 20 private uh, syscalls that can only call core. So they are for internal operation only. Yeah, and yeah, another nice thing about it is a single threaded. Uh, our approach was, okay, if you have uh, SMP or something like that, it's, uh, it's enough uh, to have a, a thread for each CPU and you simply lock the whole kernel uh, while one CPU is in the kernel because kernel passes are very, very fast. You, you get into it and then you get out of it and done. You have nothing to block there. You have nothing to... Normally, you, you don't do a lot in there. And so it should be fine with a big kernel lock. Yeah, so this makes this whole kernel only a big state machine uh, that is really, go uh, really, really good to control and uh, especially really easy to transfer into other context uh, for a newbie like me in Edda and Spark. So I thought it's the, uh, it's the perfect goal for me to go for. Yeah. Now I have to get back a little bit. Uh, we had an Ada and uh, Spark project uh, last year. That was uh, the main reason why I started to, uh, to learn this language and to get into it. Um, it's a block encryptor. Uh, unfortunately, a block encryption is a, a little bit complex, so uh, it's not ready yet. I, I'd like to uh, show it maybe next year. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but what we had uh, during the design phase of this uh, block encryptor was an uh, in-depth uh, uh, discussion about how to, uh, how to find a good design, how uh, C++ and Ada and Spark can work together. Because uh, the, native, uh, uh, the native Gnode environment is in C++ and uh, yeah, we don't want to change this uh, in the first step, of course. <laughs> And so we came up with this design um, for every uh, Spark uh, package that, uh, that shall uh, interact with C++ or that shall be called from C++ better. Uh, there is a, um, a C++ class that has only the public interface declarations, so you can do the public calls on it. And it is bloated uh, to the size of a record in Spark. 
uh, that uh, this record, this is the, the object uh, that contains the object layout, so to say. It's like a tag type, if you want so. And um, yeah, then you can leave all the allocation things out of Spark and Adder. Uh, you, you can allocate your C++ class here and, and, uh, in the C++ uh, world and call your functions. And what they do is they go through uh, some kind of intermediate uh, package that is prefixed with CXX, for instance. And this package does all the conversation, uh, the conversion between the arguments uh, that are or, uh, still in, in C++ without any restrictions. They are all uh, con uh, they, they are all translated to a, a Spark compliant way uh, to to this type uh, to be set, uh, to fulfill this type safety. And then uh, the same function is called at the real Spark package. So uh, what this makes is uh, you can uh, have in your C++ world uh, this class that is interchangeable. So you, you can have in C++ implementation or a Spark implementation. It's, uh, it uh, doesn't matter for the C++ code. It doesn't see this even. And on the other side, it's the same. Uh, with this Spark package, I can, all, I can do all my, uh, my cool stuff uh, with contracts and stuff uh, with getting, without getting annoyed by uh, the fact that it's actually allocated and called by the C++ side. So I wanted to uh, use this approach also for BaseHW because uh, I wanted to take the BaseHW design but I don't want it to re-implement it all in one step because I wouldn't have any uh, intermediate steps where I can test it and see if my, uh, if my approach is really successful. So this uh, let me uh, um, translate the single modules, uh, pick out single modules of the base of W kernel and uh, replace them with, Spark, uh, uh, with, with other implementations. Actually, it's not Spark. I will come to this later. <laughs> Um, yeah, so how far did I get? Uh, first of all, I had to uh, move all the adder runtime into the kernel. This was a little bit of work, but uh, fortunately I had a lot of uh, preparation work done already by uh, the guys from Componelit, by Johannes Kliemann and Alexander Signier. And they helped us a lot with this. Uh, they, they had always an open ear if we had any problems with the, uh, with the adder runtime on Gnode. And there were some quite difficult problems that I couldn't understand with my uh, knowledge. Um, yeah, once this was done, I started with uh, the data structures on the right side. Uh, there's, it's pretty simple. It's only a list, uh, uh, essentially, and a queue, uh, a double-linked list and a queue in, in BaseHW. Um, but uh, there I had one reason why I wouldn't go for Spark directly. <laughs> I want it, but uh, the problem is that BaseHW is uh, dependent on pointers and uh, it uses it a lot and it's a little bit hard to get rid of it in the first step. So I decided to uh, use access types and unfortunately we don't have uh, borrowing supported yet in the uh, other runtime on Gnode. So it should be uh, fine uh, still uh, with Adder. Yeah. We can't go to Spark directly. Um, yeah, then the f uh, second step was the signaling in the RPC. And my experience with this was uh, once I have translated uh, the modules and I had uh, yeah, managed a huge amount of uh, compiler errors that uh, I had to face. Um, this was really uh, that made me almost crazy, <laughs> like hours of um, compiler warnings. But uh, the, the cool thing about it is once they were implemented, they worked out of the box. And I could uh, not only uh, do some single little tests or something like that, but I could directly uh, put a, a huge system on it and run it, and it worked. And that's really cool. That's uh, something you're not very accustomed to uh, if you're developing in C or C++, I guess. <laughs> And uh, the third thing that I started this winter uh, was the scheduler. 
And this, yeah, it was it was essentially the same. The scheduler is pretty complex uh, uh, compared to the other modules in the base HW kernel because it uh, is the only kernel that applies uh, the quota-based uh, CPU scheduling system that Gnode has. So uh, you can trade uh, CPU time between components. And this makes it a little bit hard. So it's a little bit complex, but uh, anyways, it worked out of the box, and uh, that's really cool. So that's a nice thing. Uh, ah, yeah, and uh, between them, OK, uh, what, what you might have uh, figured out is uh, all the other modules that are yet not implemented in, in, in ADA are, uh, I, I take them directly from BaseHW, and they work together with the, uh, with the ADA modules without any modification. OK, so what are the plans? Um, this year, I very, uh, very definitely want to uh, put all Spunky in Adder. That's the first thing. Um, I want to get rid of the uh, residual base HW code and all the C++ stuff. Uh, then, yeah, we want to pl uh, publish the block encryptor, and maybe in us, uh, next year I can uh, show it here, hopefully. And until the end of uh, 2020, um, I want to uh, do a second step. Uh, once I get got rid of all the base HW uh, uh, stuff in Spunky, I'm free to redesign it. So essentially, I can try some uh, some strategies uh, strategies that I have uh, for getting rid of pointers. Uh, that's that's the main thing I think, and to convert all Spunky in Spark. Uh, and then, of course, I'd really, really like to uh, prove some basic assumptions about the kernel. Yeah, and in 21, I'm looking for new land. I, I'm very deliberate about uh, yeah, porting uh, the base loop in, uh, of Gnode, uh, so to say the, the native Gnode environment. So you can have pure adder components in, in Gnode. And uh, this would also allow me uh, to do another project, uh, namely uh, converting all core, uh, the, the whole co core component of Gnode into, into ADA. And that, this would be really cool because the core component is like the kernel itself, uh, something that everything on Gnode depends on. Yeah, and it would be a nice experiment for me to learn new stuff with ADA and Spark. So yeah, that's it from my side. Uh, you can try it out if you want, uh, because um, actually, yeah, I, I wanted to show this, I, I forgot this. Um, if you want to watch system is this, what I'm running on, it's Spunky itself. And you can see here that it's already, yeah, pretty productive, I would say. You can see here, okay, I wanted to start a, a window manager, for instance. Uh, and then I have to grant it the rights to access the services it needs, yeah, because I, uh, the system doesn't decide this on its own. Uh, I will give it a GUI and a pointer shape uh, service, then some clipboard stuff. And I add this component, it starts here. Uh, and now that I have a VM, oh yeah, I could lend out uh, Presentation. Now that I have a VM, I could start, for instance, um, an, bup, 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 tools, a top view that was programmed by Alexander uh, Butcher, uh, that is also uh, that is also working in, who is also working in our of, uh, office. And now I give it the themed VM that I just started and a f a font file system. Ah, yeah, I forgot to start the font file system. Sorry. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is the system font configuration? I start this font server. And then now to its top view. So I can try it again. Whoop. And where is it? Here. Okay. So it should start, and we can go out of the control panel and see here some thing whip. And now we could start this. And 
actually, ooh, this is a bit fast. So, yeah, you see it's working pretty snappy. And uh, it's already running all the communication part, uh, the, the, the RPC and the, the signaling and the scheduling bit uh, all in Ada. And that's, that's really cool. I like it. So thank you for listening. <laughs> and try out this links. <laughs> OK. Any questions? Yeah. In your opinion, experience, what has helped to reach this in the language or uh, tools on the language or Ooh. what were the, the things that were the most, uh, yeah. to achieve this? I, I think uh, that's, that's only for me. Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, what has helped uh, that uh, my implementation worked out of the box with Ada and Spark? What do I think helped a lot? And I think, uh, in, in, at least in my case, it's uh, that the, the language disciplined me to find ways to clearly, uh, to, to find a clear solution to the problem. Not to uh, try to find some short bags if I get into troubles or into problems, but the, the language doesn't allow for this. It says, no, stop, this is the wrong way. And then I have to turn back and go again and have to find another design or something like that. And that, that helps me at least a lot. Uh, and uh, the other thing is um, that, you, that, that I felt that I get a, a certain, don't know, um, a certain way of programming while doing this for a long time. I, I get another um, yeah, kind of thinking about problems and that's really cool. It, it, uh, it encourages you to break, down, uh, break things down to simple solutions and not to just uh, use the tooling that is very uh, complex and uh, fancy. And, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, what, excuse me, with Ada, with Ada uh, at the beginning of last year I started, yeah, it's pretty exactly I started at the beginning of last year. I mean I had a lot of support, uh, I had some books, I had uh, Johannes Kliemann and Alexander Sennier who already know a lot about Spark and Ada and uh, you, you have seen eventually uh, 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 the, the, the presentation of, of Johannes Kliemann they are not doing uh, the, the high abstract, uh, um, no say, simple stuff, but uh, yeah, and yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah? And these are actually not my questions, these come from Reddit, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's nice. I'm just nice. putting them for you, so, you know, some yeah? of them might have been answered already. So the first question was, uh, if the effort goes well, will we consider having the Spark Ada version replace the original C++ one? And I suppose if not, what would convince them, so you, enough to make such a move? So I think you uh, What was also the beginning? Convert what? If the effort goes well, will we consider having the Spark Ada version replace the original C++ kernel? Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. No, I don't think that this will happen. Uh, because uh, the first thing is uh, we always leveraged uh, from the benefits of having multiple kernels uh, underneath Gnode. So what you have normally is uh, that, that it's very broad uh, testing uh, basis. Yeah, if you, uh, one kernel behaves one way, the other the other way, especially the scheduling for instance, uh, the timing, it's all different. So for, uh, for us it had a lot of benefits uh, regarding development and testing. So I don't see the point why to remove the base HW kernel. It's a nice approach and has its benefits. Uh, and uh, I, think, I think especially the other thing is that uh, when I start to redesign the Spunky kernel, it, went, it will end up with a, 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 an approach, I think, that is quite different from the base HW approach. Because all the memory layout has to change. Uh, I have to rethink this. And uh, therefore, I don't think that this is a replacement for base HW. It's just another way to 
emerge. Okay. Yeah. Um, then there was a question, what hardware are you using? Uh, excuse me? What? what hardware are you using? What hardware are you uh, Ah, yeah, this, this is x86 uh, with 64-bit only. Uh, I, I specialized on this platform uh, for the first step, of course. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, yeah, I don't have the time to do it all uh, at once. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm planning to go on ARM also, uh, if this is possible. And the basic W kernel already ex uh, uh, supports several ARM platforms and x86 and RISC-V and stuff. Uh, we'll see with time. But for me, the most important thing is x86 because I'm using it on my laptop. <laughs> so in your particular case with the Spunky kernel, it would basically be a question of the runtime support from ADA. Uh, what? ADA. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So from your side, from the Spunky kernel, it would yeah. basically be the question of what uh, hardware is supported by the ADA runtime. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Dependent on yeah. I, I, yeah, the question was uh, from, uh, why, uh, uh, if I specialize on a, a certain uh, architecture and uh, if it, from my view, was only the decision, a decision because of the, uh, of the support of the other runtime. And yeah, I mean, I, I haven't thought about it a lot. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, this block encryptor project that we had it, uh, is in, uh, developed for x86 now. And so it was natural for me to keep this uh, also because it, had the, it has the most, uh, the mo most beneficial, uh, uh, the, the biggest benefit for me, yeah. Okay, next question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Are there any other questions here in the room? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I, I intermix them, yeah? Okay. Uh, you said there is no support for pointer in SPA, but actually there, there is some support for pointer. Yeah, yeah. You know okay, uh, no, sorry, it might be, uh, uh, maybe you've missed it. Uh, I don't know. Um, there, there is this uh, borrowing support for uh, proving contracts with Spark, uh, but the problem is that this borrowing is not yet supported uh, in the other runtime of Gnode. Uh, so this would be a thing, yeah, I don't know, it's a, li a little bit more work. Uh, this is another thing I want to uh, go into, the, it, it, uh, I missed it in the plans, uh, that I want to broaden the, the support of the other runtime on Gnode because there are several things missing, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what are some of the significant challenges when with converting to ADA? <coughs> Okay, the question is what are the significant, uh, what were the significant challenges when converting to ADA? Um, I must say it wasn't a lot, b mostly because I restricted myself a lot in, in ADA and, uh, because I wanted to uh, make it very well fit to Spark later. Uh, for instance, uh, I wanted to have pure packages only, I wanted uh, to don't have um, uh, inheritance yet because I don't know a lot about inheritance uh, now, now more. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I, uh, I changed a little bit the base HW design, for instance, to not use inheritance that uh, heavily. Uh, and I, yeah, this preparation works. Uh, or for instance, I, I wanted, don't wanted uh, procedures with in any, no functions with in out parameters. Yeah, for that I had to change the C++ code a little bit. But I think uh, the main thing w were a little detail in the devil <laughs> uh, that uh, generics didn't work out of the box because uh, we had no finalization. Uh, not 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 uh, generics in general, but generics with uh, with um, how is it called with uh, incomplete types. If you have an incomplete type and you want to put it in a generic, uh, there you need finaliz finalization by default, and this isn't supported yet. So Johannes helped me with this a lot again. Uh, he he knew then uh, after some research that uh, that uh, there was a pragma for no finalization. Yeah, thanks. A second, uh, Johannes, you had to. Yeah. So you can could in theory now use pointers, but um, the support you 
Yeah. Yeah. So in theory, it could be when it sparks now. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> I just blended it out <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, almost last question. Also, we're running out. Yeah. Time. No problem. Um, is the conversion to Ada helping to identify issues that weren't apparent before? So mm, not real issues. I must admit, because uh, we had all already productive systems running on Base HW before, and it was tested very well. But what I found definitely were some uh, some no uh, don't don't I, I don't know uh, like like uh, gray areas where I was lucky that we don't uh, didn't have problems with the C plus plus code before, and because it was programmed a little bit dirty. Yeah, and when when I started to uh, to fix all the compile errors I had with Ada and Spark, I had to I had to uh, clean up these these gray areas. But there were no real issues with the base HW kernel. Okay. Um, last question uh, for the normal Ada code, uh, but basically from what I understood. The gluing code between C++ and Spark. Uh, are you using any static analyzers, and if so, which one? For the glue code, uh, be between them, no, no. no. Uh, I I didn't uh, analyze it uh, in, in general. Um, with you mean with with a prover or something like that? Yeah, well, I just you know work with him a couple yeah. of questions from Reddit. Yeah, th this will be a future task, definitely. I, I want to get rid of the glue code and the C++ code anyways, uh, so I didn't see a point in yeah. okay. analyzing it. Okay. Yeah. So, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thanks. <laughs>